Okay, so AIM 4.9, what was the Chinese revolution that should be in your books? Uh, we just talked a little bit about some responses to the do now question, so away we go. All right, I'll give you a second here. Okay, so essentially what happens here is a lot of the people of China feel that their government kind of allowed this to happen. So the fact that the British kind of established spheres of influence and lose the opium war, a lot of people blame the government for that. So uh, this guy, Sun Yat-sen, will uh, establish what's called the Revive China Society. Um, he thinks that the government of the Qing dynasty, who has allowed this imperialism to take place, is no longer really capable of governing the country. So this is kind of China's way of lashing out against their government and blaming them for British influence and foreign influence in China. They feel like this government has given the country over to the Western superpowers and they are not happy about it. So um, he wants to take China back from those people. Uh, and basically, he's a progressive. He he uh, he sees you know a way you know a, he sees a path forward here. So his plan is to stage a military takeover of the government and kind of remove the Qing dynasty from ruling. Uh, they're still in dynastic um, you know situation, so system of government, which we've gone over. So you guys should be familiar with that. Um, step two is prepare the Chinese people for democratic rule. People that have lived under a dynasty and with an emperor for a long time, democracy is not just a switch that we can flip and then everyone's, hooray, democracy. That's not really the way it works. You have to prepare these people uh, for democratic rule, which means you have to condi condition them to participate in their own government. That's going to take some time. And then finally, uh, he, his vision is to establish a constitutional democracy um, and kind of go from there. So he's planning this revolution. That is step one. All right, I'll pause a second here. So I don't know if you realize it, but I think this is the first lesson where we have actual photography that we can look at. Um, so it's a momentous day in the life of a Global 2 student. Uh, your first actual photograph is part of the lesson. So in 1911, Sun Yat-sen launches his uprising and, and you know, starts his plan. The Qing dynasty collapses. Uh, the, you know, the government is weak and it is incapable of ruling and, you know, they're gone. Goodbye, Qing, di Qing dynasty. No more. Um, however, Sun kind of overreaches here. He, he, he launches his plan and then realizes that he doesn't really have the strength to kind of form a new government. So he asks a general, Yuan Shigai, uh, who was in control of the army, to kind of rule in the interim, you know, in the in-between while they figure this out. And the problem is that Yuan Shigai has no idea what democracy is all about. Um, he's lived his whole life under dynastic China. He sees this as just kind of an opportunity to seize power and install kind of a new imperial dynasty. So he basically sees this as an opportunity for he, he himself to kind of rise up and be the new emperor and establish a new dynasty in China because that's the system that he's lived under his entire life. So he kind of, you know, uh, when, when Sun Yat-sen asks him, Hey, we want to, you know, prepare for democracy here. We want you to rule, you know, in between, he sees this as an opportunity for his own personal gain to establish a new dynasty. Okay, so um, Sun Yat-sen asks Yuan Shigai to lead. Yuan Shigai really just reverts back to the old way of doing things, and he's using murder and intimidation, you know, kind of eliminating political rivals, and it's a lot of the same old stuff. So Sun Yat-sen's group is like, wait a minute, this isn't really part of the plan. You're not doing this right. And this leads to kind of a conflict between Sun Yat-sen's Nationalist Party. They're called the Kuomintang. Uh, you see it here. Make sure you get that down. Um, and Yuan's kind of old school uh, way to do it. Um, 
Yuan is in control of the army, though, and that makes it very difficult. Long story short, Sun Yat-sen's plan kind of blows up in his face. Maybe it's poor planning. Maybe fate is kind of aligned against him. But regardless, he is unable to kind of see his plan through to the end and turn China into a democracy. He ends up uh, essentially going to war with um, Yuan Shigai. But Yuan Shigai is, you know, way kind of way too much for Sun to handle. And Sun Yat-sen and his crew flee. And they flee China altogether. Um, and they go to uh, Taiwan, um, the island of Taiwan off the coast of China. And that's kind of where they will remain. So what this is really all about is this is really about what imperialism has, has caused within China. Um, because the people of China are so upset that um, the government has allowed imperialism to take place and allowed these foreign superpowers to take control of their country, both economically and politically, um, they fight back, and this is the outcome, this conflict here. So um, it's important to kind of understand this. So your classwork for today is you're going to take a look, a little bit of a closer look uh, at this conflict.